Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hi guys. This is Freelance of Tom and Tory B. Burley. We are here demoing the fantastic Star Wars The Deck Building Game designed by Caleb Grace, who is just amazing. We had the, the opportunity to meet him this weekend and he was superb. Absolutely adorable and obnoxiously humble. Yeah. Because we got him to, obviously you could probably see on our box, we got him to sing our box. And he was like, I don't think anybody would want my signature. And we're like, everyone we speak to will want yeah. your signature, Caleb. We, we proved him wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's a little bit up front that may be, that may be a, bit, a bit confusing, but we will walk you through it. Mm -hmm. We are trained game demonstrators. I thought you were going to say trained professionals. I'm like, no, we're not. Yeah, Absolutely. I would not. never call myself a professional. <laughs> How dare you? Okay, so I'm going to work left to right. But first, I'm going to explain the objective of the game. So the objective of the game is to destroy your opponent's base. In a short game, it's the first to two. In a long game, it is the first to four. Uh, this, uh, we have a starting base each that you must start the game on. Mine's is Lothal and yours is... Dantui. Uh -huh. They both have an attack value of eight, so they are roughly... Uh, so they are identical in stats, mm -hmm. just to make the beginning sequence very balanced, very fair. After which, and I think this is a really cool feature, once your first base is destroyed, at the start of your next turn, you are allowed to look through the entire deck to pick another, ba another base to, uh, to use. So that is so cool. It gives you a lot more control and you can begin to be very strategic about the base you use. Uh, okay, so next up, we both have 10 cards to start with. They're both very clearly labelled Empire Starter. And a rebel sucker. Each card is five cards per turn. And no, each each hand is five cards per turn. And at the end of your turn, whether or not you use that card, it goes to your discard pile. For clarity, I'd suggest you keep your deck on your left hand side face down and your discard pile on your right face up. Uh, anything you purchase in the middle row, and I'll explain that in a little second, also goes straight to your discard pile first. Now you're wondering, how do I get to use the cards then? Well, I can answer that question. Um, eventually, once your once your deck is depleted, you will shuffle the discard pile, and that will become your deck. So you're constantly uh, disposing of cards, discarding them, and then supplementing them with new cards. So as I mentioned, left to right, this is the Galaxy deck. This is where new cards will supplement the Galaxy row as they are either bought or destroyed, and this is the galaxy roll. At each, at each time in the game there should be exactly six cards here uh, and right now we've got a nice healthy mix for demonstrator purposes of neutral cards. I just put them to like count the six and lost yeah. count and I was like wait other six? <laughs> Panicked. <laughs> yeah. We have neutral cards, we have empire aligned cards and we have label aligned cards. So, uh, only I am able to purchase Empire Aligned cards, we can both purchase neutral cards, and only Tori is able to buy Rebel Aligned cards. Uh, however, there is a really fun aspect to this game called Bounty Hunting, mm -hmm. where I am able to destroy uh, my opponent's cards in the Galaxy Row if I have damaged tokens equal to or exceeding the value it takes to destroy it. For example, if I were to destroy, if I had three or more attack points, I could destroy the X-Wing here. And in addition to taking that out of the game so that my opponent cannot um, purchase it, it also has a fantastic reward. So in destroying that, I would gain plus three resources during my turn to spend. That is nothing to be sniffed at, especially early on. And it means, as I said, that my opponent can no longer purchase that. So anything destroyed in the Galaxy Row is popped into the Galaxy Discard Pile. And then immediately replaced with, something else. With a new card. So I'll put that back. Yeah. In fact, I'll put that in the bottom so we don't know what's coming up. Yeah, don't want don't want don't want any surprises because this deck is not <laughs> currently stacked yeah. for demonstration purposes. Um Yeah, this is a real game. <clears throat> yeah, this is, that we are gonna this destroy one of us. Oh yeah, we haven't actually um, played this. No. We we just spent the past three days playing this at Star Wars Celebration, and I don't think at any point we've played against one another. So oh. this is you guys are about to witness history here. <laughs> so, um, as I said, you can only damage, you, sorry, you can only bounty hunt 
cards in the discard, uh, sorry, in the Galaxy Roll, which have a little damage token here. So as long as it says reward for destroying, you can bounty hunt it. Meaning you cannot bounty hunt neutral cards or capital ships. They're just hanging out. Yeah, they're, they're not doing nothing. They're just there. Um, so moving moving on to um, the Force, this meter here is the Force. So the Rebels start with the Force on their side. And when it's all the way in this little box here, Tori gets one free resource per turn. Mm -hmm. If it is either here or here, the Force is still with them, but they do not get that resource. If it is in the middle, the Force affects neither of us. Uh, and I'm going to make it my personal mission whether or not I'm winning this game to get the Force as close to my side as possible. And as you can probably guess, if I manage to get it into this little last box at the end, I start the game with the free resource. So pop that in the Rebels. Yep, it now, always starts <clears throat> with the Rebels because we're the good guys. Yep, it always starts with the Rebels. However, you might think that seems a bit unfair. To counterpoint that, the Empire start the game. So I will be drawing five cards in a moment and we will see my hand first. Uh, the only other thing to explain are these little uh, cubes here. So we have damage tokens and resource tokens, which Tori is going to This is show damage, you. and the little golden cubes are resources. So that's money, and that's TV. Yeah. So uh, I think other than that, I just very like uh, very quickly like to explain the outer rim pilot. He is his own separate resource. That that entire pile is just outer rim pilots. Um, they, when purchased, much like anything you buy in, in the Galaxy Row, go straight to your discard pile to be shuffled into your deck later. Mm -hmm. However, when you finally do draw him, not only do you get two plus resources, but if you choose to, in fact, I'll show you up close. If you choose to exile him, which means that he's out of the game completely for that game, you gain one force point. So the outer rim pilots are very valuable for me as the Empire because the force does not start on my side. So I think that's everything. We're going to draw five cards and begin. Okay, one, two, three, four, I think one of my favourite things is that it's not a very strategic heavy game. So because you start every turn with a brand new hand, empty hands, no resources carry over, you can pop them like this, so face up. And kind of work from there rather than having because my instinct whenever I get any cards is to, is to hide them. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I would also add that um, when your cards are face down, it's more beneficial to you to mm -hmm. put the resource value on it, just it's so that say, it's very good for at a glance. You know immediately what's what's there. You know what you have to to work yeah. with, what you're going to go forward with. And so it is the Empire's turn. So you have five resources there. I do indeed. So, what are we thinking? So I think I am going to buy something from the Galaxy Roll, mm -hmm. since that is the best choice for me. I am going to buy the Nebulon Frigate. So that costs five. That's denoted by the little icon at the top. And that means that my entire hand is spent on that one action. And all of these cards now go to the discard pile. Mm -hmm. uh, I will buy the Nebulon Frigate. and it That will, also goes into your discard pile. It will immediately be replaced. Before I pop it into my discard pile, I want to quickly tell you about capital ships in more detail. First of all, the Nebulon B Frigate is perhaps my favourite card in the game because it has a relatively low cost to purchase. Damage, five points of damage to destroy it is actually pretty decent protection, but also it has a fantastic special ability where each turn it's in play, you can use it to either repair three points of damage to your base or accumulate three points of resources so it is value to cost fantastic so that is the end of my turn and i pass it all to you you draw up to five yep i will draw up to five because there are some cards uh we'll probably have a wee look at them later but there are some cards that theoretically would be in my hand that make thomas discard one card from his hand and obviously if at the end of his turn he doesn't have any cards in his hand that would do nothing. Yeah, so it just so, saves time to pre-draw during your opponent's turn, just so that you always have a hand ready. Additionally, just before we move on, I very quickly want to explain this card. We both have one that has a similar, uh, a similar effect. Mm -hmm. Rather than having a preset thing of either um, resource, attack, or force, this allows you to pick which one, so you can be very strategic and 
uh, picking one that's most beneficial to you during that term, but you can only pick one per term. Yep. So I have three resources mm -hmm. and four attacks. Fantastic. So I've used all of these. And what I'll actually do, Thomas had mentioned it earlier, uh, but I'll just show you a physical demonstration for lack of a better yep. word. So I'm going to use these three resources, this three money, to buy this X wine. Fantastic. I've used these cards. They go here. I've bought this card. This goes here as well. Yep. And these resources get popped back into the little pile. These don't really add anything. It is literally just a visual representation. And we all like little trinkets. We all like little cubes. My trinkets. Now I have two options here. Yep. I can put all four of my damage onto Thomas's base, which would bring that down to four. Four damage. So I would only have to hit it for four. Or I could bounty hunt one of these. Now I have four damage, so I could hit one of them. But an important thing to note is if I was to put all four damage here, that would stay, and then I would have to build up to eight. So my next attack would then add on to that. With Galaxy Row, it's all or nothing. So if I for if this for example was a three, but I hit it with all four, that extra damage would be discarded as well. I think what I'll do, I've tried to decide if I want to start myself off with less cards or just go for attack. Well, I would like to remind you at this point that Lothal is home to 1.8 million people. <laughs> However, General Veers has, uh -huh. a, has a wife and family, so uh -huh. I don't know if there's a well, morally right choice for you here. In that case, this ATST is just a robot. It also has a wife and family. Pew, 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 pew. So okay. he gets discarded. So that is bounty hunted. And as I said, anything and replaced. Anything bounty hunted in the disc uh, in the galaxy roll goes to the galaxy discard pile. So I draw my five remaining, that's now my hand. And as you can see, the reward on this is exile up to two cards from your hand or discard pile. That means I get to look through my discard pile and the hand I've just drawn and exile a couple of cards. What I'm gonna do is exile it's up to two. It's up to two. Exile two resource cards. So these get set aside, they don't get shuffled back in at any point. They are out of this game completely. And so I yep, I'm left with these three cards for my next turn. Shouldn't have done that really. Uh, it's quite it, counterproductive, but so be it. That, that's the way the game plays. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, now that I have my new hand, it is up to you. Okay. Uh, so I am going to pop the damage tokens and resources down. Mm -hmm. um, you, don't, you, you don't need to decide how you're going to use your variable cards until you decide. I currently think the best thing for me to do would be to use it to move the force one point towards me. So that means that during Tori's turn, they do not get that extra resource. So that goes there. Next, I am going to purchase an Outer Rim Pilot. He is worth two. So I pop those two resources down there and they go onto my discard pile. And lastly, I have um, four points of damage that I can deal out. Unfortunately, as I said, you cannot bounty hunt neutral targets. Mm -hmm. Damage and the galaxy row needs to be all or nothing, and you, there's no point in attacking your own uh, your own uh, cards. A good, so a uh, good rule of thumb is two cards can attack one card, but one card can attack two. Yep. So those are two cards that do two damage each. So what you would theoretically be able to do, if you wanted to, would be to take him out, and then deal two damage to my base. Yeah. But you wouldn't be able to say build up this build up to this six. Yeah. Damage is only accumulative on capital ships mm -hmm. and bases. Yep. So you are correct, and I will deal four points of damage directly to Dantooine. Ah, that's harsh. And with that, these go in my discard pile, and uh, I now get to redraw. As we mentioned, once your first ten cards have been used up. You get to reshuffle, and we get to see how bad I am at shuffling. <laughs> Do you want me to shuffle? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, and then it goes back over here, and it's now my deck, but with 
any cards I've now purchased are now available. So I'm going to draw my five and then Tori can take their next turn. Okay, so I am going to use my Temple Guardian to bring this back to me. Okay. And I have two left. I will buy this Duro Spy. And I will replenish the middle. Thank you. There we go. And this is the turn for me where everything clicked and everything made sense. It made more sense. As you say, give this discard pile a shuffle. This is all of my base cards and the two cards that I've bought. Face down over here. Draw five. Eight, four, five. And then it just repeats like that. Yep. So I believe it's my turn now. It is indeed. Not to keep doing this to you, but I am going to play my Inquisitor cards. And bring the force one point towards me. Mm. Next, I'm going to put my capital ship in play. As I mentioned, um, capital ships remain in play until they're destroyed. And any damage you would want to do to the base needs to go through that. Mm -hmm. So to this, to damage my base in this turn, Tori would need to deliver at least six points of damage. If I have to destroy this, and then any anything left would overflow onto my base. Uh, I'm going to use the base's special ability. I'll show you that up close. I can choose to repair three points of damage or gain three resources. Since there's no damage currently done to my base, it makes sense to do three resources. Additionally, I am going to get another resource from that and two points of damage for both of these. So first, I am going to purchase General Veers. Mm -hmm. And as we said, he goes straight to my discard. That is those resources done. And the Imperial Frigate goes to the discard. But like I said, Nebulon remains out. And I am going to deal four points of damage directly to Dantooine, oh. destroying it outright. You're so mean. Now, as I said, um, when you are, uh, when your base is destroyed, Tori won't redraw a new base until the start of their next turn. So the extra damage cannot be done, and it gives you some breathing room between your first planet being destroyed and the next turn. So I will draw five cards, and okay. it is now your turn. Okay. So. First of all, you get all of these damage points back. Thank you very much. And this as a trophy. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm going to mount it to the hood of my car. As Thomas said, I'm able to look through these new bases and pick where I go. So, oh, I am going to play Mon Cala, which you'll see it's got 10 hit points and it has this little flavour text. Uh, passive ability, which is when you reveal Mon Cala, purchase a rebel or neutral card from the galaxy roll for free and add it to your hand. So I'm going to get Princess Leia for free. Uh huh. Which I was just worrying about how I didn't have enough money to get her. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is if the force is with you, draw one card. Yep. So it is with me, so I get to draw an extra card. So currently you have seven out. Yeah. So. Well, she gives me, and I get all the resources from Princess Leia and yep. this card that I've just drawn right away from having them in my card, uh, in my hand. So you give me two extra resources. I'd you like, give me two extra attacks. I'd like to add that Leia has oh. a, a, an attribute for each aspect. So they give you two attack, two resource, and two force points. Oh, I think so yes, the, that's the point. So the, the force returns to your side. Damn it. <laughs> Purchase a rebel card from the Galaxy Roll for free is Princess Leia's passive ability. Uh, if the force is with you, place that card on top of your deck. Unfortunately, there are no rebel cards out. Um, so I've used that ability. Uh, the trooper, this Dura Spy, your opponent must choose. Either discard one card from your hand or I gain one force. Which actually bring it, Princess Leia brings it back here. Yeah. Now... This is something that I had to clarify with Caleb, the lovely man who made the game. The force is all the way with me, so you have to discard one card from your hand. Okay. I double checked I... that because somebody had asked me and I was like, that's a great question. <laughs> I will get rid of this Imperial Shuttle. It was my favourite. That, but... that is just this card, so it goes back into your discard pile. It can get shuffled back in. Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, so I am rolling in cash now. You actually have enough to buy Leia. I would have enough to buy Leia, yeah. yeah. 
put up five damage. If you're taking some advice from an opponent, mm -hmm. I would strongly suggest buying the Sea Rock Cruiser and the Mobot. Mm -hmm. like, I will actually use my Temple Guardian as an extra money. So I've used all the abilities on here. Yep. I've collected the mm -hmm. little cubies. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is just, just to keep myself straight yep. and keep myself clear as I'll pop these into my discord pa discard pile and this, oh. this would be a great time to show some mercy oh do you think yeah I would yeah okay so I have two four six eight monies yep now what I like to do is when I'm buying things if I know I'm gonna buy you can buy as many things as you as you can afford on your turn what I like to do when I'm buying things is I buy, I, or I try to buy the cheapest thing first, because the reason being, I'm going to buy this Sea Rock Cruiser, and if the next thing that comes out, that's a neutral, I could buy that for one, I can buy that right away, I don't have to wait for it to come back around. So I used three there, yep, yep. and... I am going to buy that Mobot because I do like him. He's one of my favourite cards. Yeah, I'd like to add a wee thing about Mobot. He is similar to the variable card From we have. Two. Uh, and that he has a variable ability, but instead of it being plus one, it's plus two. So he could net you either two resources, two force points, or two attack points on the turn that you draw him. <sighs> okay. 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 What I'm going to do is attack him for three. Okay. So I gain three resources. And, and that's discarded there. You get three resources, yeah. Oh, you could you could now buy the Kilder Seven Mystic one. and the Z95 Headhunter. That's what I'm thinking. I've got two, I've got two attacks, I could take him out. Exile one card from your hand or discard that won't help me just now. So I'll just do two to the frigate. Okay, two, da two damage to my frigate. And that's three points away from being destroyed. Buy the Headhunter first because that's cheapest. Okay. And I can't buy that X wing, but I will get that killed or missed it yeah, as well. Unfortunately, the X wing is now out of, oh, your, out of your price range. Big turn. Yeah. Big turn. Okay. Four. So, actually, this is a very good thing as well. So, my new cards, there's only four of them. What I do then is draw these four cards that are left over because mm -hmm. they would go in next, give my pile a shuffle, and then just draw one up. So, I draw up to five, but the important thing to note, and it's something that even I get tripped up with, is you keep. The, the one, two, three, or four, or however many that you were going to draw from, and you draw new cards from this deck here. Yeah, so that you're not getting rid of cards that you otherwise should have played. Yes. Yeah. So I would also like to make a quick note. So currently, my Nebulon Frigate has two points of damage. There are a few capital ships which have damage and or resource effects. So if your uh, you're capital ship has the capacity to deal damage i would suggest putting the damage token next to it rather yeah. than on top yep. so that the damage done to it doesn't get confused for the damage it can deal that's a very good note because i did that quite a few times yeah where so, i was like wait hang on there's just so many cubes about yeah unfortunately uh, my turn starts with me down a card mm -hmm. but i have four points of resource mm -hmm. so one two three and four oh, not quite enough to get both of that yeah however i do have enough to buy Admiral Veers and the Scout Trooper, so I'm going to buy both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they go straight to my discard pile and we immediately replenish. <gasps> and Tori oh. now has the Millennium Falcon, potentially. So, uh, similar to Tori, I have two cards here. I need to shuffle and draw three more to make up. Okay. It keeps it balanced, it keeps it fair. So, I unfortunately so, don't have enough to buy that Millennium Falcon. Four, five. I only have three monies. So I will buy this X one instead, because they okay. are good. Uh, that is a neutral card. Right. And... I've got four damage. I will do one, two, three. Which wipes out my Nebulon Cruiser. And now... When the, these are destroyed, they also go into your discard pile. Yep, so you can always bring them back out. So, other the way I like to think of it as a problem solved for now is not a problem solved forever. <laughs> and I do one damage to your base, because the damage from capital chips and your bases do roll over into the other. Yep. So, uh, first off, I am going to gain two resources from my outer rim pilot. 
And then, partly for demonstrative purposes, but also because I do not want the force on their side, oh. I, am going, I am going to use his special ability to exile him to gain one force point. I just realised the force was on my side and I should have gotten an extra. It wouldn't have done anything. Yeah. But I should have got an extra resource thing. Sometimes that happens. You must remain vigilant. Yep. You're going to pretend that that was, an exa that was a teaching moment. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, I now move this one to me. Unfortunately, now this Outer Rim pilot is out of the game mm -hmm. for the rest I'm of the game. I'm going here with my exiled ones. Uh, yeah, there you go. Just so that they don't get smushed. That's fine. Uh, next up, I am going to pop my resources down. Uh, two damage and two damage. Uh, so I don't have any special effects. So this won't be uh, an amazing turn. But what I am going to do is so that they don't go to waste and so that I can keep clawing that force towards me, I'm going to purchase one Outer Rim Pilot. And that's my resources spent. These go to discard. And I am going to attack your base for a cumulative four points of damage. That's fine. I've just realised something. Is it something you can share with me? Or something it's you want... something I'm just about to... Something, so, yeah. Keldor Mystic. Okay. I bring this back to me. Oh. Exile this unit to exile one card from your hand or discard pile. I'm choosing not to do that. Passive ability. I have two resources from Leah. I have one resource from this Elias Shuttle. Okay. I have two resources from this Duro Spy. And you must choose either discard one card from your hand or I gain one force. The force is with me. Discard one card from your hand. Okay, I'm going to get rid of one of these Imperial Shuttles because it does the least amount of damage to my current hand. Rad. Uh, now, I am going to do Leia's passive ability before I decide what this Temple Guardian is going to do. Okay. Because she also gives me two damage, she also gives me two force, but whatever. Purchase a Rebel card from the Galaxy Roll for free. If the force is with me, I put that at the top of my deck. I will get this Millennium Falcon for free, thank you very much. And the specifically place this card at the top of your deck. What that means is I'm putting it right here. So I know that that's going to come out in my next hand. Yeah, there are a few cards that allow you to draw directly to your hand, but again, it will clearly say as much. And with these five money, I will take Cassie and Endor. Thank you very, very much. Oh God, this, 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 this one's not going to well for me. <laughs> And I will deal. I will choose him to do an extra damage and deal three damage to Lawful. Thank okay. you very much. So I am four points of damage away from my yeah. first base being destroyed. Uh, I pretty much par for the course. I'm going to use the Inquisitor to bring the force one point towards me. I'm refusing to let you keep it for too long. <laughs> I'm going to use these two resource points to purchase another Outer Rim pilot. Now. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to buy too many more of these because I do not want my deck choked up with the cards because they are they, they only have a limited amount of resources each turn, but we'll see. I'm having a great time. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the first time that I, I've had a really strong card to use. Uh, General Veers has mm -hmm. an accumulative four points of damage. He also has a special effect that isn't relevant just now, but when he when he is in play, if you have a trooper or vehicle in play, I would be able to draw another card. Currently, I do not. So I'm going to do these four points of damage to you. Four damage is still four damage. Yeah, and that leaves you two points away from a better defeat. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it is now your turn. I yep. While you're going, I'm just going to quickly draw my four cards just in yes, case. Yes, please. So... And as we said, only four here. So I'm quickly going to shuffle my... A discard pile and uh my Rodian gunslinger has a very good ability which is this unit gains two attack while attacking a target in galaxy row mm -hmm. so he attacks for two normally however if he was to target someone in galaxy row he would attack for four yeah unfortunately there is one, isn't anyone in galaxy row that would be able to take that damage so he just gives me two yep that's fine i've got one uh resource from this alliance shuttle Okay. I will be putting this Sea Rock Cruiser into play, which gives me one resource. And I can discard one card from my hand to repair my base, three damage from my base, which I hadn't thought about, but you know what? We're rolling with it. I will discard you, Lobot. I promise I will use you to your full ability soon. And here is that three damage back. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So, so I, I have. I am one away from my first base being destroyed. Yep. I believe it's my turn there. Uh, no. 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 Okay. I've still got the Millennium Falcon, baby. Uh oh. So I have four resources. Uh huh. The Millennium Falcon has given me five damage. Okay. And add a unique unit to your hand from your discard pile. So a unique card is anything that is named. It has a little Double icon on it. Would you like to show the camera the icon? I would, yes. So you see it's this little lovely little star. You will find mostly it's kind of named characters. So it's a unique unit. It's somewhat it's a unit that is specifically like, hey, that's the guy. Yeah. That's the man. I will add though that Tori is about to mount a spectacular assault on me. <laughs> However, um, pl- I can one, only do so much. Yeah, so once my once my once my base is destroyed, all that damage goes to waste. So this could be a very powerful but wasted turn. Trying to do maths and it's very embarrassing. Well, I only need one point of damage. So you try to damage something in the middle so that it's not. Well, that's what that's what I'm that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Because as say- you can see, obviously they've all got uh, little passive abilities. But the passive abilities can multiply stack. and stack onto other ones. And so I'm trying to figure out which passive ability is best for me. Well, um, since you got those damage tokens from multiple things, you could do the five points of damage from the Millennium Falcon mm-hmm. onto either Boba Fett or Director Krennan because they both have good rewards. That's and then the remaining is... damage to Lothal, which would wipe see, out my first planet. Leia does. So I can bring either of these two out. Yep. Leia does two. Uh-huh. And get me two resources, which would be enough to take that out, yep. and it would still have five to take out either one of these. Yeah. However, Cass has the five, so I would be able to take that out, still take one of these out. But when Cassie and Andor defeats the target in Galaxy Row, your opponent discards one card from their hand. So I'm trying to choose whether it would be more beneficial for you to discard a card. Or for me to possibly take out one of these cards and the next card maybe be a rebel card for me to take. Obviously I'm your opponent, I'm here to destroy you, but I would suggest you destroy <laughs> at least one of the cards yep. in Galaxy Row, because if I get the chance, which I think I've just got enough, I'm definitely buying one of those. Yeah. So I think what I'll do for- is I will bring out Cassian. Okay. So bye bye Leia for just bye bye Leia. So I will use these two from the other ones I have to take out Lothal. Okay, so Lothal is gone. And, oh, actually, oh, my sweet baby Cassian has given me enough to take out both. Yep. Yeah. And as we said, immediately sweet replenish. Baby. Sweet baby boy. So I get a landing craft. My gor- my gorgeous, sweet, handsome man. And there's a fang fighter, which is neutral. And I have still have four resources to. You could buy the Hawk. Or Dengar. Oh no, 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 no. I was going to get the Fang Fighter because that's when you, purchase what, when you purchase this unit, add it to your hand, draw one card if the force is with you, but it's got three damage which won't do anything even. Yeah, cur- currently. That would have been really good. That would have been a really good double punch. Cur- um, currently, you can't do it anymore. Okay, two resources, repair. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to get this Hawk. Okay. That's a good. That's a good. Sorry, HWK. And again, I have two cards of my new cards. Give this hefty stack a big shuffle. Yeah, you are you are swole with power. Those are so that is something that I have I noticed while we're playing is that the rebels have a lot of firepower. Yeah. Like you can't like it's just like what just happened there. You can just go one after the after after the other after the other, but the empire have a lot more healing or or repairing cards and a lot more defensive maneuvers. Yeah. So uh, I believe it's my turn now. It, it is finally your turn. Yes. I am going to drop off this damage from Lothal, and <laughs> you get that. Now I'm going to look through my deck and see. Oh wait! Oh no! I didn't bring out Leia. Never mind. Okay. Uh, I am going to play Karelia, which also has ten points of damage. When you reveal Karelia, purchase an Empire or neutral card from the Galaxy Roll for 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 free and add it to your hand. So I am going to purchase and play the Star Destroyer. Dang it, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, finally a card for you though. Mm-hmm. So oh, you. it goes to my hand. Yep. I'm going to play the Star Destroyer and the Nebulon Frigate as capital ships, giving me 
That's 12 true. points of damage before you can hurt my planet. 12 Zentesas, 22 all together to hit you. Yeah. So I'm now going to add my resources. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And as I mentioned before, the Nebulon Frigate has an ability where I can either choose to repair 3 points of damage to my base, which just now is none, or gain 3 resources. So I now have, I now have plenty of resources. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 points. Uh, unlike Tori, I like to be greedy, so I just buy everything at once. So four, five, six. I'm going, to, I'm going to buy these mm -hmm. and the Fang Fighter for, for for nine, and they all go to my they all go to my discard. But that has cleared the galaxy roll, so that there are some new cards here as well. Yep. And that is the end of my turn. Nice. So uh, Got got a lot more got a lot more cards. I feel a lot happier. I'm, I'm well defended. Nothing is nothing bad is ever gonna happen to the empire. <laughs> the empire wins. Yeah. So I have the Millennium Falcon again. Uh huh. Who gives me five damage? Yep. Two resources. Yep. And the passive ability adds a unique unit from your discard pile to your hand. I don't have a discard pile at the moment, so I don't. I just don't use that. Uh. Three damage from this fighter, from this X-Wing, if yep. the force is with me, draw one card. I get cast, I love that man! I'm going to need to borrow some of your damage tokens, I'm afraid. Go ahead, you need five, yeah. Uh, I need three, because I've already got the two here. There you uh, go. Thank you very much, Lee. No problem. And two damage from this headhunter, if your opponent has a capital ship in play, draw one card. I could be... <laughs> I could be entirely wrong, but I think... Our capital ship is just the one. Yeah, it does. It is, Could it be it wrong. Isn't stacked. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that it is because I. I feel more comfortable with just the, the one. Yeah. And so she gives me two more resources and two more damage, and that brings that back to me. And the two of spy gives me two resources, and my opponent must choose either you discard one card from your hand or I gain one force. I feel very confident. I say. <laughs> so um. I, you must discard a card. Uh, I will Sir? I will quickly shuffle these Ooh, and okay. Uh, so we have two, four, six, so eight, ten, two, twelve, three, fourteen, four, sixteen, five. eighteen, nineteen damage. And I will not mess about. Uh, I am going to discard this this card. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. So my Star Destroyer is gone. Or to my discards. One, two, three, four, and five. And my Nebulon B Frigate also goes the way of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and two, four, six, seven. And I'm right in that math. Yep. Yes, cool. And, and I am uh, three points away from, from losing. I can purchase a Rebel card from the Galaxy Rule for free if the Force is with me, place that card on the top of my deck. So you are coming out to me. Yep. And that gets replaced. It does indeed. And that is, that, that I is have almost, enough to buy that B-Wing. That is almost the end of your turn though. Almost. Yeah. That is me. That's me now done. Okay, so <laughs> I, ha I have my four cards <laughs> because I needed to discard one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have... Uh, I have five points of damage and three resources. Yep. So uh, I am going to buy the Twilix Smuggler with mm -hmm. my three resources. Uh, these go away. Uh, I am going to uh, I am going to get rid of these now. I was hoping that had a special ability, but I misread it. Yep. Uh, that happens. Now I am going to do my five points of damage to you. So that's three points from the Fang Fighter to destroy your Sea Rock. Pew, 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 pew. Then this goes to my discard. And then and two more to uh, yeah. now Kala. One Kala rather. Yep, so that's seven damage I'm on. So we're both three points away from victory. Uh, now I'm going to draw my five cards for, for you because you've, you've caught me a few times with us now. <laughs> Okay, it is your turn, and I, as I have no capital ships, and you have a lots of damage, so I feel this is a foregone conclusion. I believe but, it might be. Yep. 
So he gives me two damage and she gives me three damage. You know what? Let's do this properly. Discard yeah. one card from my hand at random if the post is with me. So put your cards all together, yep. give them a shuffle and then put them face down for me to pick one. Okay. Do do do. Do do do. Oh. I'm going to destroy do, do, do. Do, do, do. Uh, do, do. Oh, this one. Okay, that is one of my Imperial Shuttles. I will just grab <laughs> that. That is fine. There we go. And I have two cash monies, which I will use to buy this. Might as well drag this out a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I can feel it. Do I have anything for you? Well, while you are doing this, I'm getting shuttles off the planet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what I'm, this is a mercy. Yeah. I'm letting you evacuate before. Of course, yeah. Pew, pew. Pew. And uh, Karelia is toast. So there we have it. It was the first to two. Tori now has, ah. uh, Tori now has two bases. Uh, you can play up to 10 planets mm -hmm. um, if you choose to, because there are 10 planets in each deck. But we hope this was a nice little solid grounding in the Star Wars deck building game. It is available online now. Uh, Very limitedly. <laughs> it would... came out on March 2nd. March 3rd. March 3rd. Yep. And it is already sold out in the States. Sold out in France. A very, very limited edition. Very, very limited to get in the UK. So if you can, go get it as quick as possible. S snag it as soon as you can because... Yep. Uh, we will tell you a little bit of behind the scenes thing. We were demoing the game for a company we work for all weekend during the Star Wars celebration. We played this for 10 hours a day for three days straight. Four. Four days straight. And I still love it. Would you say the uh, same? Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. Because as I say, so many of the cards have different passive abilities and they all play off of each other, but they play off of each other completely differently. So this card would interact with any of the other cards in completely different ways so there's always a new strategy there's always a new thing happening and i genuinely feel like i must have done it at some point especially since when i bought this copy we got these gorgeous promotional sleeves which are also uh available from very very select um outlets yeah are fact, very and like very hard to get since you mentioned um, that, I want to quickly show what the cards look like without that. Oh, they so, still look gorgeous, and they're such yeah. high quality cards. So this well. is what the uh, base cards look like without the the fancy it's card protectors. Um, that is actually different to what the regular cards look like. So if you want to take out a regular card, uh -huh. show it. Um, it's got a nice Star Wars. Yeah. It's got a nice matte finish. As I say, it's such. Like these won't get soft and squishy anytime yeah. soon. It is a nice card stock. The card the card sleeves are just merely a benefit for because they're very visually interesting. It's the same art um, as the as the as the box. But yeah, but I also, must I must as I was putting the sleeves on these, I'm sure I must have seen all the artwork on them. But every single game I play, I genuinely feel like I haven't even seen haven't seen even half of the cards same. that are in here. Like yeah. it feels like every single card and every single turn is so different, is so unique, is so of that game. Yeah. So as a little piece of fun, do you want to show a couple of cards from the winning deck just to oh, the camera? Yep, sure. Yeah. So we've got our starter deck, of course, you all saw that. This is our X Wing, our beautiful X Wing. And as you can see if the force is with you draw one card. Our our Hawk unit, I don't even think I got to play him. Wait a brag. I know. And the same with my Lobot, I had to discard my Lobot, I didn't even get a chance to use him. He's one of my favourites because as, as Thomas has said, it's, it's similar to the Temple Guardians or the Guardians, but they are, you can choose for two attack or two resources. Um, let's get, there's the money shot. Yeah. There's the Millennium Falcon. And there's my boy Cass. Sure you didn't stack the deck? I'm sure I didn't stack the deck. I gave it a right big shuffle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna trust and you. And you know what? Just my girl, my girl, my main, my main girl, absolute stand, Princess Leia. And you know what? I want to show off. Let's find them. Oh yeah, you're gonna show my boy Luke. Yeah. yeah. So obviously so, we were working with Caleb yeah. Grace, the fantastic designer of this game. Yeah, I cannot speak. So humble, enough, no. so sweet, so kind. Like went out of his way at every single stop for 
anything and everyone. He was so nice. Um, but when we were getting our coffee signed, I had said, oh, so which which of the cards in the deck is your favourite? And he said, oh, well, obviously, it's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And I was like, okay, can you sign my Luke Skywalker card? He just passed it there, but um, one of my yeah, favourites... Uh... So he has his lovely signature and the gorgeous artwork on there of the the main guy, the do, main boy. Do, I want to ask, because I never had a chance, do you have a favourite card? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. They're all, I feel like they all just work together and sync so well yeah. that like it changes every time I play because I'm like, is the artwork, I'm especially taken by the Jen Arsa artwork. We've, I was, we've discussed Yeah, it. I was about to say. Where uh, the, oh, show, Dar- show Vader. Show Vader. Uh, Jen is here. So uh, this is my favourite card in the game. Not only was Rogue One my favourite piece of Star Wars media, but... I just love the artwork. I don't it know just why. really it's pops, just, the colour saturation. It's just is so great. striking, it's so like I feel like it's a really powerful image and I don't even know. Here's Vader. Oh, I do the march. Wait, we'll get copyright strikes. Oh no, oh, God. It. But um this is Vader. But the artwork is fantastic and it's all very classic and very mm. iconic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that is everything. This ha- we have been Freelancer Tom yes. and Tori B. Burley. For off the record, we have been demoing the Star Wars deck building game and it is available online at limited supplies if you're interested in purchasing your own copy. And more importantly, more specifically, most importantly about all of this, I won, I won. And with that, and w- <laughs> and with a, a limited amount of um, gloating, it is done. Bye. Bye.